my lovelies, I hope you're all well. Halloween is fast approaching. I am in the midst of putting all my decorations up and I am very excited, even though it's not gonna be the same this year. I think we can all go a bit OTT and then when the children walk past our houses, they can be excited and you know get candy or sweets from their parents uh, because yes, they won't be doing their usual trick or treating. So I am going all out this year. So for those of you that don't know, in our group, UK Cricket Creators, you don't have to be a UK resident, you can be anywhere in the world, but you do need to love your cricket to be able to join. We are doing free virtual events. So we are in our fourth month, I think, and we do an average of about eight a month. They are fantastic. So you book a ticket, they're free, absolutely free. And each one's normally about two to three hours long. And we have a project that we let everyone know we're making beforehand and what materials you need. And then we all come together, you learn, and we make something together as well. They're great fun, they're really good. So one we did the other week was Myla stencils. Myla stencils are great because they're reusable. So I use vinyl a lot to create my stencils, A, because it's cheap and it's quick. Myla is a rigid plastic, which means you can wash them and of course you can reuse them over and over again. The first thing you need to do is actually measure the area of your blank. My mind went blank then, but you need to measure the area of your blank and you need to make sure that your stencil, so this is gonna be my stencil area here, is larger than the design. Because if you make the design going to the edge of your stencil. If you're using pastes, mousses, inks, anything like that, they're obviously gonna spill over the edge. Now, if my blank is within the realms of 11 and a half by 11 and a half, I will make my stencil the size of my blank. If it's larger, so the blank is larger than my stencil is going to be, that's absolutely fine, but I need to make sure either way that the stencil area is larger than the design area. So I've made my stencil area 10 and a half inches squared, and I've made my design 9.75 inches squared. Now when you're doing your slices, because we need to slice so we don't lose all of these middle pieces, you need to treat Myla like you would cardstock. So if you were going to cut a card, for example, and you didn't want to lose all the middle areas of your words or your designs, this is the same process. So this process allows you to be able to cut, but still keep all those middle so this process allows you to cut, but still keep all the middle areas of your words and your images. I always like to do this so my image is the size I'm cutting because what you don't want to do is do all of this work. Your image is larger than it's going to be. You reduce it right down and then you find that actually these all these slices you've made are now overlapping each other. So the bridge that you've created is now gone. So you've done all this work for no reason at all. So if you can, when you're doing this, make sure that your image is actually sized to the size you want. So as you can see, I've created lots of little lines. So I make the width of these 0.05. I find that works well for me. But as I say, that is with my image sized to the size I am going to cut it. And all I do is I go to shapes and depending on the font or the image, I'll either get a square or a circle. So for this one, I've used squares, but I'll show you it in circles as well. So all I do is I unlock it and I make the width 0.05. And I can then choose the height for each of my letters and my images. So for this one, let's make it one inch. And you want to make sure that that lock is off because if you resize the height, it will resize the width. So with this circle exactly the same, all I do is just bring it down, but you'll see it's more curved. So where 
my square is very straight, my circle is more curved. So if I've got a really curved font or a really curved image with not that many straight lines, I will use a circle. So what you're doing is you're creating a gap. So you're creating a gap in your word or your letter or your image so that it comes to the outside world, so to speak. So you're making a gap between the area you don't want to lose all the way through past the actual cut line. So I've got one of my pieces here. I'm just going to duplicate it so I can use it over and over rather than making it again. And you see, I'm going to bring it over to my A. Now, if I have that straight, it won't look too bad. But what I like to do is actually have it so it's going on the edge of where my area joins. So for example, on my R here, you can see I've got it going straight through that join. And with my O, I've got it right in the middle. So on my A, I've just got it off to the side slightly and it's following the line of the letter. So I need to make one for this R as well. So again, if I just bring it over, I can then place it in the center. Now the thing you have to remember is if your line or your circle, whatever it is that you're creating that gap with, if it comes over to another area of your letter, it is going to slice out of there as well. So you will have to play with these to make sure that they are how you want them. So with this A here, it might just take a little slice out of that area. So if I just move it down slightly, and just change the height of it. So let's do 0.6. And I've made sure that that lock is unlocked. That is a lot better. I'm going to duplicate that one. So I can bring it down to this A. And again, I might just have to play with the angle slightly. And you also want to make sure that it's not going into another letter. There's a lot that you've got to take into account with this. So I just want to change the height on that. So again, I need to make sure that that lock is off. And let's do that as 0.5. And in fact, we could even go 0.3. And then just change the angle slightly. And if I duplicate that one, I can bring it over to this one. So that it's in line with the rest of the letter. Again, I want to do this A, so I'm just going to make sure that that's unlocked. And let's make the high 0 0.3. Create something like that. I think that will work really well. So I'm going to duplicate that one. Because obviously, as we've said, I like to make sure when I'm doing this, that this cut is going to be the size I want it cut. It just makes it so much easier, I think, especially if you do it large and then reduce it down. You could end up closing these gaps you've created. So you've done all this work for nothing. Right, so that is done. Now you can see from our image, it is two layers. So it's a two layered image. Because we're cutting it out as a stencil, we want it to just be the one layer. Now I've come in and I've placed everything where I want it. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually hide all of those lines. And you're thinking, Jen, you're crazy. I promise you, the easiest way to do this is to line everything up first 
and then do welding and slicing and all of that. It just makes your life a lot easier. And of course, if you're doing this on the app, you need to remember that you can only slice 10 times before it'll say you can't slice anymore. So with something like this, you do want to do it the way I'm gonna show you because if you individually come in and slice each of these, you're only gonna get so far before it says, no, you can't do it anymore. And honestly, it takes you twice the time. So do it like this first where you're placing everything. And then you want to hide the lines first. So to hide them, just use the I button down your layers panel. You do not want to move anything because you've already spent all this time placing it. So don't move it, just hide it. Because if you hide it, it will just be hidden, but it's not actually moving it out the way. And the reason I keep the layers as they are when I'm placing my slice lines is because if I'm staring at the same color, I really struggle, it's a personal thing. So if you don't and you're like, well, I could have just welded that from the start, then do that. Do what works for you. But I know if I'm looking at the same colour over and over, I really do struggle. So now all I'm going to do is highlight all of that image and I am simply going to weld it all together. Now the reason I'm welding it is because A, we want it all to cut out as one anyway and b as we've already said you can only slice two things at a time and on the app you can only slice up to 10 times so by doing this rather than having all those different layers design space has now said well it's just the one layer i'm going to bring back all those hidden lines and to bring them back i'm just doing that by re-clicking on that eye and you'll see when it's hidden, it's got a line going through it. And when it's not, it hasn't. It's fairly self-explanatory, but you know, I will say it just in case. So I've brought all those lines back. So what I need to do now is hide my welded image. And I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. And I'm going to select all of those slice lines and now what I'm going to do is weld them together as well because as you'll see at the moment they're all individual and as soon as I weld them they become one layer so if I bring back my image all I need to do now is just slice because I'm slicing as far as design space is concerned two images whereas before we had I don't know how many layers there were but there were a lot of layers so all we do is draw around and you'll see the slice button then becomes an option if we'd have done this before it would not have been an option and if you're ever unsure why the slice is not coming up, look at your layers panel because you'll see when something is selected, it goes a dark gray. So if you've got more than two things dark gray on that layers panel, you know that you've got more than two layers selected and that's why the slice isn't coming up. So your layers panel is completely invaluable to you. You'll see I end up with all these slice results and I can delete all of them because that image there is the one I want to keep. If I zoom in, you can then see we've created all these gaps between the middle of our letters and the outside world, so to speak. So we're now not going to lose them. So I've got my stencil outline, my stencil square. So I'm gonna bring my image over to it. And all I'm going to do is highlight a line and center to make sure it's nice and centered and then all I'm going to do is slice so I'm going to slice that image into my stencil wondering about this image I will link it in the description below it's a image that I got from design bundles and it was in a bundle so I will link the Halloween bundle and I will also link the individual image as well that is now ready for us to cut. So I can now go to make it. And then continue. Now, Mylar's a tricky old thing. It's not just about the GSM of the Mylar. It's about the rigidity of it as well. 
I've tried lots of different mylers and sometimes they don't cut at all and it doesn't matter what I do. Sometimes I have to create my own cut setting and then other times, like with the mylar I've got today, I can use a cut setting that's already in design space. There is no, it, it is really hit and miss with mylar. So I will link the mylar that I use in the description below uh, because I've tried lots and lots. And as I say, I've had success with some and others have been a complete failure. The one that I use now is the one that I always use now and it's consistently good. So for this one, I go to browse all materials. And it cuts really well for me on the foil craft board holographic. And I also select a pressure of more as well. So this is the piece of wood I'm using. This is a block from Made by Tree. Anyone that watches me knows I absolutely love Made by Tree. And Ali stained it in this sort of black, lovely stain. So I thought it'd be wonderful to use with stencils and some of my eye zincs, my uh, glimmer pastes, kind of different mediums. Uh, A, so you can see what you do with different mediums and B, so that we can make an actual Mylar stencil. So I'm using a green mat and it's a relatively new green mat and it's got lots of stick on it. Mylar is very slippy and it's very rigid as well. So you do want to make sure that you are putting it onto a good mat that's got a lot of stick to it. If it hasn't, I would suggest putting masking tape around so that you can make sure this isn't going to move. I then secure it to my mat using my Cricut brayer. Again, those of you that watch me know how much I love my brayer. I've got four of these now, I think, and they all get used and I'd be lost without them. I've got my deep point blade in just because that's what is in there and um, the craft room's a bit of a mess at the moment and it's just gonna stay in there. But I have done this plenty of times with my fine point and with this mylar it works perfect as well. So it doesn't really make a difference whether you're using the deep point or the fine point, they both work absolutely fine on this setting with this mylar. to be careful not to over bend your mat and also use your tools to help you as well because you don't want to rip anything away. So I like to use the Crafters Companion Stick and Spray. It's a repositional adhesive so it's fantastic. It washes off easily, it won't leave a residue and if it does leave a residue on your blank you can easily remove it. It's great for using on cardstock and all sorts of different blanks. So I'm going to put it into my wood, but it's fantastic. You want to turn your stencil over so you're doing it from the back and you do want to make sure that you've protected your surface. And you're going to come in about 15 centimeters away and just give it a spray. This is really, really obnoxious. Uh, so you either wanna do this in a really well ventilated room, outside if possible, and if you've got sensitive lungs and all of that, you really need to think about wearing a mask as well. It's really strong smelling. You want to leave it for about 30 seconds. I've cut mine down a bit because I didn't measure it 
correctly so it's a little bit too big to sit in here and I want to make sure I'm gonna have to cut a little bit at the bottom here as well I want to make sure that this is sat nice and flush that's better and of course you can come in with your brayer and just really make sure it's secure the great thing about this is if you're not sure on the position because it's repositional you can keep moving it around until it's exactly how you want it so I just want to change that mouth just slightly the great thing about using stencils, and it can be any stencils, vinyl stencils or Mylar, is that you can use a variety of different mediums. So I've got some Nouveau Glimmer paste, I've got some Nouveau Glacier paste, which I love. There's some Cosmic Shimmer Gilding Polish. Nouveau Embellishment Mousse, which is something I really, really like. And another of my favourites is the Izink Diamonds. Izink, Izink, I don't know. I always call it Izink. I could be wrong. I love their diamond paste. It's beautiful to work with. If I want to put some glue in here and put glitter down, I can. The world is my oyster with stencils. I can paint, I can do all sorts of different things. And I can use all sorts of mediums. If I'm doing it on cardstock, I can use inks and the possibilities are endless with stencils. What I like about all these materials is you can use different tools with them. So you can use sponges, you can use paint brushes, you can use, I can't think of the name of these, spatulas I don't know there is an actual name for them can't remember it you'll know you'll all know what it is but you can use those as well and you can play with the textures and the thicknesses so you could put this on really smoothly or you could put it on with more of a texture so really exciting when I'm using my diamond paste, I like to put them, this is my Deflecto paint saver, which I absolutely love. So Deflecto are a storage company. I do have a discount code for them for Amazon UK. They are in the States as well. And they do amazing storage solutions. I love these paint savers. I think I've got about four of them now. They, um, you put your paint in or you can put your diamond paste or whatever it is, you can mix your colors and then you close the lid and lock it and they will keep fresh. So you can have acrylic paints in here. I had acrylic paints in here for about three weeks and they did not dry out, which is fantastic when you're doing lots of mixing. So anything that I've kind of got to put out, I and, I struggle, and if I'm gonna to struggle to put it back in the pot, I put it in here so that I can keep them fresh. So this time I'm going to use my palette knife and I'm going to put it on thicker and then I can just scrape any excess back into the pot. 
So I've got a bit of the eye zinc diamond paste and I'm going to come in and just start adding it to that bit of the stencil. And sometimes I find using my fingers works just as well. So with the Cosmic Shimmer Gilding Polish, it does come with this cool little brush in there, but this is quite big for what I'm doing, so I'm not going to use it on this occasion. But I am going to use just a normal paintbrush. Oh, it's so gorgeous, that colour. And I'm just going to paint it on. <laughs> 